for Rhett. Rhett, uh, Gus has mentioned several times about how the first week is all about yourself and also making adjustments. When you look at Gus as a coach and being with him for as long as you have, how's he stacked up when it comes to in-game adjustments? And how important is it for this week? And also, um, when you look at Arkansas, or excuse me, when you look back at what you guys did last season early, can you maybe point out a specific instance where you guys made some adjustment that really stuck out to you and ended up proving to be the difference, especially very, very early in the game you guys are trying to figure things out? Yeah, you know, first game of the year, especially when you got, you know, they got a new coordinator, your opponent does, that's when it's always hard. Um, you have an idea what you think people will do, but you really don't know. And so I think that's why Coach just said, you know, adjustments, keep it simple first game, you know. But, um, I think that's something, whether it's first game, middle of the year, last game, he's always been good at adjustments. But I think it's because, um, you know, when you run a system that you're very familiar with, uh, we believe in what we do, as most people do, then you kind of know your system inside and out, so you know how to make quick adjustments here or there inside of the game. Um, I don't have a quick example off the top of my head from last year, but, um, you know, sometimes it's as simple as little bitty things on the sidelines we do in between series. Sometimes it's at halftime we all get together and can slow down for a second. But, uh, you know, that's the name of the game uh, early on uh, in the season is, uh, you know, using those first games as a filling out process for both teams. And so you just kind of got to be ready. I have you told Jeremy now that we're in a game week, have you told Jeremy about preparing and going about this week in particular? Uh, I just told him, uh, him and Nick both, you know, be ready to go. Uh, be ready to play. Don't worry about, you know, how long this or that. You know, I know Coach is going to handle Tuesday, uh, all those kind of questions and things. But, I uh, feel really good about the way both Nick and Jeremy practiced the last week, you know, and, and today's no different. Rick, can you talk about the uh, running backs? You've got a lot of them to choose from. Yeah. Well, the, the good thing is with Cameron and Corey, you feel like you got two um, quality senior every down backs in our league. Uh, you know, Corey, I think, has definitely developed into an every down kind of back. Um, definitely feel the same way about Cam. I mean, I think Cam is faster this year than he was last year. Uh, they're both really good in pass protection. They're seniors that come to work. So you can trust those guys. After that, been really pleased over the last probably two weeks uh, the way uh, Rock Thomas and Peyton Barber have prepared and practiced. You know, neither one of them have ever played a live game. You know, Peyton redshirted last year. Rock's a true freshman. So you never know how those guys will handle themselves. But just uh, from in terms of the game slowing down for both of them, feeling like they're going to know the game plan well enough to play. And, um, you know, they've, they've done a good job in ball security. So you feel good about those guys, but there's just a lot of unknown until they play. And really with freshmen, you just got to, whenever their time comes, you got to throw them in there and, and let them figure it out. But um, having two senior backs that have been there and done that's a big safety net for us. Well, well Cameron Petway probably redshirt, do you think? I uh, don't know at this point. Um, you know, first week, you know, we'll have our ideas on certain guys, but you just never know. Um, but, uh, you know, you'd always like to play guys if they're ready to play at all. Um, and if either they're not ready or the depth are, just to give them a chance and you'd like to not waste a year. So we'll see right. how that ends up probably about week three or four. When the offseason mission was to be more balanced, when you're playing not only a conference game, but an opponent who likes to have time possession as much as they do at a two to one, more than two to one yeah. the first half last year, a uncertain quarterback situation, how much is this first game may not reach those balanced goals that you have laid out? Or is it just going to be, hey, well, I think balance is um, it's that interesting question because some people look at balance as it's 50-50 run pass or 60-40 one way or the other. Um, and, you know, I, I'd hate to give a percentage. I think 60-40 is a quality number or, or 50-50. But for us, balance is being able to take what's there and simply being able, hey, we're good enough. If you're giving us the run, we can run the football. If you're giving us the passing game, we can throw the football efficiently. And that's where it lies for us because when we've been at our best – Every year it's been, hey, one game we may throw for 350, the next game we may throw for 120, but we ran for 280 because every opponent's going to have a different plan. You know, some guys want to take away the run, some want to take away the pass. And so for us, balance is feeling the confidence in our passing game that, hey, if you're going to dare us and make us throw, we're going to be able to do it. And if you're going to dare us and make us run, we're going to be able to do it. Last year was a little bit of an exception, I really still believe. And this first game will be no different. Uh, we're, we feel good about where we're at in the passing and the run game. It's just going to be a matter of, uh, you know, how the game unfolds are probably you, determines how balanced it really is. Sorry, um, are you at the point now where you feel comfortable that you could put Rock Thomas out there on the field to play in the first game? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, talking with Tim just the other day, with both Rock and Peyton, we feel like, hey, if 
they go in the game and hey, they're going to play. And uh, they're going to probably make some freshman mistakes at times. Uh, we feel like they're as prepared as they can be to hold on to the football. That's the number one thing you worry about. Um, you know, how many heavy pass protection situations you put them in, you know, might be different as opposed to older guys, but they have done it a lot. They, we feel good about them. And so it'll just be a matter of, hey, take, take your lumps a little bit when you're young. But um, I think they both got confidence. We got confidence in them. So uh, we got no reservations about playing them. Rich, you've seen your defense yeah. through the spring and, and camp. Do you think they have they have they moved up a lot from last year? Do you think? I think so. I think we're faster. Um, you know, just looking, and I think they're deeper. You know, um, just just playing them, we, we seem to play faster. I think both in speed and just in knowing the scheme, our guys get lined up and make adjustments and don't bust. And um, so that's something I think they've done a really good job of just playing fast, uh, physically and mentally. And then, you know, up front, Rodney does a great job, and I think Coach Johnson's got those linebackers, you know, um, they're showing some leadership, and really they understand the scheme, and I think uh, they've been a lot, they've been, they've been a handful for us in fall camp. Brent, in an interview on Friday, Gus had told the reporter that, uh, as he has said, Jeremy Johnson is going to start Nick has his issue. He has not publicly stated that. You yeah. have not publicly stated that. When he even has difficulty, keeping track of what he has said publicly about the situation. How do you not expect this ambiguity to affect your 19-year-old quarterback? I don't have any issues with what's going on internally here. Uh, my guys know what to expect. They know what's going to happen. Coach will address all kind of depth charts issues on Tuesday. And uh, I feel really good about Jeremy and where he's at. I feel really good about Nick and where he's at. I feel really good about where our team's at. Um, they both believe in both those guys, and there's no uncertainty on our team at all. Red, how comforting is it to have a guy like Reese and, and some veteran guys in the middle of the offensive line for you heading into a season opener? Oh, very comforting. we got three returning starters. Now they're moved around a little bit. And then, you know, Pat Miller started four games last year. Sean Coleman played. So, But having a guy like Reese, especially for us, it's center. Um, that's just when you play fast and, and all the things that we do, well, he's, he's huge for our offense. He's huge for the quarterback. He's huge for everybody. Uh, now we've got uh, – you know, Quan, I think, is our only senior, but we got guys like Sammy Coates and Melvin Ray and Ricardo Lewis that have played, Marcus Davis even, that uh, have some experience at wide out to lead. We've got two senior running backs, two senior three, uh, you know, tight end fullback, H-back bodies, and a senior quarterback. Uh, it's just a different place we're in. But um, Reese has always kind of been the backbone um, of our guys, especially up front, and he shows great leadership, both just mentally and intangibly. You mentioned Ryan Thomas. Uh, what other freshmen think of a chance to play in the you know, I don't know. Um, you know, Braden Smith's a guy that you never know. Could, could see action, rock, uh, stand trip. But, um, you know, all those guys have done a good job, and they're all going to be available because the good thing is having a home game, you can dress more guys. But um, you know, coach, will, coach will get into that, releasing the depth chart and all that kind of stuff on Tuesday. Greg, can you kind of take off your Auburn OC hat for a second? As a, as a I forgot to wear my hat today. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean literally, but you know, I took it off. You have it. But you know, take take that way. You're an Arkansas native. You know, played there. Yeah. What's your thought on just kind of this, this rivalry, this buddy rivalry between Auburn and, and it's kind of a new new, new thing for this last few years. Yeah, uh, you know, we got a lot of guys on the staff. M not just myself that are, have Arkansas ties, went to school there, have a lot of family that still live there. So there's just natural storylines, um, you know. So at the end of the day, it's been far enough removed for me, and we've played Arkansas enough times that it's it's another game. It really is. It just so happens to be the first game, and it's an SEC game. That makes it huge. But um, I got a lot of friends and family back home in that state that um, they're big Razorback fans, but they pull for Auburn one game a year for sure, and. Um, you know, so uh, I, I think at some point, you know, you try to make a story out of it, it's a big game for us regardless of where I'm from and who we're playing. What are you hearing from your family and your friends as far as, yeah, they're cheering for you, Auburn, but, you know, are they excited for this game? Is this more than just, you know, an season opener or an SEC season opener? Eh, maybe for them a little bit. I just know if they want a ticket, they would better roll orange. So on that's, a, that's all I know. On a more personal level, though, Red, I mean, you coach with Rory at Sanford. Yeah. Do you still – is there – more to that personal battle in this? Or? No, Roy and I have a great relationship. As a matter of fact, when Roy moved to, uh, to North Sarsal, he called me, asked me questions about schools for his son. 
you know, and I was only at Sanford for that one year, which happened to be the, well, I guess Roy was there too, but it was the only year we were there together, but got great respect for him. He did a heck of a job with our special teams at D-line that year. And, um, but, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing it. So. When, when your bosses are have such philosophical battle being played out in the public over the last 15, 18 months, is, how does that affect a relationship that you have in this run? With who? With, with Roy. No, not at all. No, I mean, you know, we're all professionals, and uh, at the end of the day, uh, I'm part of the Auburn family. I represent Auburn. I'm trying to do everything I can to win for Auburn and myself. Roy's the same way over there at Arkansas. But, uh, I mean, other than for that three or four hours that we're competing on Saturday, uh, we'll shoot, text, call, whatever. Uh, maybe just not quite as much this week. But, um, no, there's there's no issues there at all. Are you going to run at a faster pace this year? I mean, is that the goal here? Well, if we can get enough first downs, you know, um, we always are looking for ways to play fast and even try to play faster. I think our guys having a good concept of the offense, kind of like I was answering about our defense, will allow us to play faster. You know, there's less thinking, more reacting going on. And then at the end of the day, you got to get first downs and stay on the field to get tempo uh, going and play fast. So if we're able to do that and keep moving the chains, then hopefully uh, we'll go as fast as they'll let us go. As a, as a coach, do you like some of that gamesmanship where last year the whole thing about the, the film – there being an extra point missing, and then they run a swinging gate play or whatever near the end zone to do a first down. Do you kind of like that just from a competitive standpoint? Oh, I, I don't know. I mean, I really – in my role and where I'm at, that stuff doesn't really affect me that much. And uh, I've got a job to do is to get that offense prepared to execute at a high level. And um, all that other stuff's good storylines because I know leading up to day week two for y'all six, seven months in advance, you got to find things to talk about. Um, but at the end of the day, we're both playing our first conference game, and both of us want to be 1-0, and and all that other stuff really doesn't matter unless it affects you on the field as far as, you know, them executing play or us executing play. But that, no. Red on that. Nikhil oh. progressed in, like you hoped, Duke Williams. Oh, dude. Yeah, I almost forget what his real name is. Um, <laughs> he's been good. He's had a good camp. Um, you know, he's had some ups and downs in transition like anybody would that's new. But been really pleased overall with what he's done. And, uh, you know, we feel really good about all our wideouts. They can all – they know all the positions, so you can move them around, play them a lot of different spots. So, uh, that gives us a lot of flexibility. Red, a second ago you, you mentioned that, you know, what this game really boils down to is you guys both want to start out season 1-0 and the conference 1-0. When Ellis was in here, he just mentioned that he doesn't like starting the season with a conference game. He'd rather work his way into it. How do you feel about that? Well, I mean, just – it's tough. I mean, our league's tough. At the end of the day, the margin for error in our league is so small. I mean, you look at the game there last year. We won the conference. They came in last in the conference, and the game was an 11-point game late in the game at their place. And we fumbled a ball that we got back. Had we not got it back, who knows? I mean, the margin for error in our league between the top and the bottom is just so minute that it doesn't matter who you're playing. An SEC game, you got to be ready to play, and you got to play at your best. So there's a lot of unknowns in the first game, no matter whether you got experience coming back or not. And so I think for both of us, there's a lot of sense of urgency when you open with a conference opponent to start on the right foot. And then for us, I'm just looking at it, I think Arkansas has won four of the last five here. So, I mean, we know exactly what we're getting into. Uh, they're a very good team. They're going to be much improved. And you just look at how they finished the year last year. They basically beat LSU in Baton Rouge. So we're going to have to play very well our first game out of the gates. And, you know, you're just – sometimes if you don't start with a conference opponent, there's more margin for error. There's less in this case. So that means you like it. Means a lot. Like what you mean? You like starting with a conference? I don't. I don't know. I mean, you got to play eight teams in our league, anyways. So I don't know if I like it, but uh, that's the way it is. We got a heck of a schedule this year, anyways. So I'm fired up about it. Everybody good? All right. Thanks, Thanks Rick.